Hello everyone. Today we will be reading The Little Red Hen. This version of The Little Red Hen was written by Florence White Williams and published by the Sawfield Publishing Company. The Little Red Hen is an old English folktale. I hope you enjoy today's reading. There will be a craft at the end, so don't forget about that, and I hope you enjoy. A little red hen lived in a barnyard. She spent almost all of her time walking about the barnyard in her pickety peckety fashion, scratching everywhere for worms. She dearly loved fat, delicious worms and felt they were absolutely necessary for her health of her children. As often as she found a worm, she would call cluck, cluck, cluck to her chickies. When they were gathered around her, she would dispute most morsels by her tidbit. A busy little body she was. A cat napped lazily in the barn door, not even bothering herself to scare the rat who ran here and there as he pleased. And for the pig who lived in the sty, he did not care what happened so long as he could eat and grow fat. One day, the little red hen found a seed. It was a wheat seed, but the little red hen was so accustomed to bugs and worms that she supposed this was something new, and perhaps a very delicious kind of meat. She bit it gently and found that it resembled a worm in no way whatsoever. As to taste, though, because it was long and slender, a little red hen might easily be fooled by its appearance. Carrying it about, she made many inquiries about what it might be. She found it was a wheat seed, and that, if planted, it would grow, and when ripe, it could be made into flour and then into bread. When she discovered that she knew it ought to be planted, she was so busy hunting food for herself and her family that naturally she thought she ought to make time to plant it. So she thought of the pig, upon whom time must hang heavily, and of the cat who had nothing to do, and of the great fat rat with his idle hours, and she called out loudly, Who will plant the seed? But the pig said, No, not I. The cat said, Not I. And the rat said, Not I. Well then, said the little red hen, I will. And she did. Then she went on with her daily duties, the long summer days, scratching for worms and feeding her chicks, where the pig grew fat, the cat grew fat, and the rat grew fat, and the wheat grew tall and ready for harvest. So one day, the little red hen chanced to notice how large the wheat was, and that the grain was ripe. So she ran out calling briskly, Who will cut the wheat? The pig said, Not I. The cat said, not I. And the rat said, Not I. Well then, she said, I will. And she did. She got the sickle from among the farmer's tools in the barn and proceeded to cut off all the big plant of wheat. On the ground lay nicely cut wheat, ready to be gathered and threshed, but the newest and yellowest of downiest of Miss Hen's chicks set up a peep 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 peeping in the most vigorous fashion, proclaiming to the world at large, but most particularly to their mother, that she was neglecting them. Poor little red hen, she felt quite be bewildered and hardly knew where to turn. Her attention was sorely divided between her duty to her children and her duty to the wheat for which she felt responsible. So again, in a very hopeful tone, she called out, Who will thresh the wheat? But the pig with a grunt said, Not I. And the cat with a meow said, Not I. And the rat with a squeak said, Not I. So the little red hen, looking, it must be admitted, rather discouraged, said, Well, I will then. And she did. 
Of course, she had to feed her babies first, though. And when she had gotten them all to sleep for their afternoon nap, she went out and threshed the wheat. Then she called out, Who will carry the wheat to the mill to be ground? Turning their backs, with a snippy glee, the pig said, Not I. And the cat said, Not I. And the rat said, Not I. So the good little red hen could do nothing but say, I will then. And she did. Carrying the sack of wheat, she trudged off to the distant mill. There she ordered the wheat ground into beautiful white flour. When the miller brought her the flour, she walked slowly back all the way to her own barnyard, in her own pickety-peckety fashion. She even managed, in spite of her load, to carry a nice juicy worm now and then, and had one left for her babies when she reached them. Those cunning little fluffballs were so glad to see their mother. For the first time, they really appreciated her. After this really stupendous day, Miss Hen retired to her slumbers earlier than usual. Indeed, before the colors of the sky came across to herald the setting of the sun, her usual bedtime hour. She would have liked to sleep late into the morning, but her chicks joining the morning chorus in the hen yard drove away all hopes of that luxury. Even as she sleepily opened half an eye, the thought came to her that today the wheat must somehow be made into bread. She was not in the habit of making bread, although, of course, anyone can make it if he or she follows the recipe with care, and she knew perfectly well that she would need to do it if necessary. So after her children were fed and made sweet and fresh for the day, she hunted up the pig, the cat, and the rat, still confident they would surely help her some day. She sang out, Who will make the bread? Alas, for the little red hen, once more her hopes were dashed, for the pig said, Not I, the cat said, Not I, and the rat said, Not I. So the little red hen said once more, I will then, and she did. Feeling that she might have known all the time that she would have to do it by herself, she went and put on a fresh apron and a spotless cook's hat. First of all, she set the dough, as was proper. When it was time, she brought out the molding board and the baking tin, molded the bread, divided it into loaves, and put them in the oven to bake, all while the lazy cat was sitting by, giggling and chuckling. And close at hand, the vain rat powdered his nose and admired himself in the mirror. In the distance could be heard a long-drawn snores of a dozing pig. At last, the great moment arrived. A delicious odor was wafted upon the autumn breeze. Everywhere, the barnyard citizens sniffed the air with delight. The little red hen ambled her pickety-peckety way toward the source of all this excitement. Although she appeared to be perfectly calm, in reality, she could only with difficulty restrain an impulse to dance and sing for had she not done all the work on this wonderful bread? She did not know whether the bread would be fit to eat, but joys of joys! When the lovely brown loaves came out of the oven, they were done to perfection. Then probably because she had acquired the habit, the red hen called, Who will eat the bread? All the animals in the barnyard were watching hungrily and smacking their lips in anticipation. The pig said, I will. The cat said, I will. And the rat said, I will. But the little red hen said, No, you won't. I will. And she did. The end. Thank you for listening to the little red hen in the next clip I'll be do doing a craft for you
so if you'd like to do the craft feel free to watch the next clip but if you don't you can always close out now thank you for reading and listening along hello welcome to the crafting part today i'm showing you how to draw this little chick since our book was about the little red hen and her chicks so what you would need is a pencil an eraser some sort of um coloring utensil so like crayons or markers or colored pencils anything like that pens so i have these two yellow and pink markers you can use any colors you want and then if you want this is optional you can have some something something to outline it with so i have a black pen to outline with and i have a white pen to do highlights but again, those are optional. So first you want to start with, you want to draw it lightly, because this is just like a sketch. So you want to start with a little circle for the head, and you want to do a bigger circle for the body, and then you're going to want to connect them, like so. And then some little feet. And a little wing. And then a little beak. So then you want to do more of a, an official shape. And make the head a little small. I'm going to move my head down a little bit, I think. <laughs> it's okay if your chick isn't perfect. As you can see, I had to fix mine up a little bit. I'm not very good at drawing birds. There's my little beak. I'm just going to keep the bird's eyes closed. Here we go, there's a little bird, so if you're using just pencils then you'd want to, I'm just erasing the whole thing, but you'd want to erase the sketch part, and because I did it too darkly you can still kind of see it, which isn't that big of a deal, you wouldn't fully erase it, you would just um, erase the sketch part, but my eraser's too big. But I did the parts that I wanted to keep darker so I can still slightly see them on the paper because I lightly erased it. And I'm going to go over those parts again. I need to fix up the beak. The beak, you want it to be more of a triangle shape. So at the top, it connects like that. There's a triangle right there, and then underneath is like another little triangle. There you go. I don't mind that big shape. And like I said earlier, this is optional, but I'm taking a little black pen and I'm going around. There we go. I'm going to add a little bow on my chick. Um, yeah, there we go. You can add some little lines around the side if you want because chicks are usually pretty fluffy. 
You can do this with pencil too. So they look fluffy. There we go. And if you do an outline with the pen, make sure it's all dry first. Then take your eraser and erasing pencil marks. Again, this is only if you're using a pen. If you're not, then you can just skip that step. Take whatever you're using your color with. Make sure if you erased anything, that there's no eraser that's left. And color it in. You can color it any color you want. I'm just coloring mine a little yellow. If you want, you can make underneath the feather a little bit darker because there'd be a shadow there and underneath the beak. go and then you want to take this is optional but I like to do a little blush um, but I'm gonna put pink on the beak if it has a pink beak then the bow is gonna be pink and there we go we have our little chick I hope you enjoyed today's video and today's craft I'll see you guys soon thank you